Hello, this is Swipe with a BAFTA Games special. Coming up on the show. Comedian and awards host Dara O'Brien tells us how he's guiding the next generation into gaming. Fighting for games glory. Find out who won what at the ceremony. And away from video games talent, we check out the hot new crowdfunding campaigns making the most of the weather. Hello and welcome to Swipe from the BAFTA Games Awards 2016. This is the one night of the year when the biggest names behind video games get together to honour the industry's talent. And what a massive industry it is. In the UK alone, it's worth more than £4 billion. Now, just before the ceremony, I got to catch up with tonight's host, comedian and gamer, Zara O'Brien. This is your seventh time hosting Jesus in eight yeah. years. I know. Why do you keep coming back? It's kind of an industry I, I enjoy, and there's an element of this is very different to you. I've hosted the BAFTA Television Awards, and I've hosted various movie awards and stuff like that. They're kind of not fun as a gig to do because there's a lot of kind of the hangers on and kind of the beautiful people who are just there to be seen and be seen who's and seeing who's being seen. This is the people they're really into this because it's their industry, and they work really, really hard on these things, and they really want to know who wins. So actually, they're very much more invested in this, which makes it actually just a fun gig to do. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good evening, one and all, and welcome to the 2016 British Academy Games Awards. You've got a lot on your plate, though, haven't you? You've got yeah. your presenter, you've got yeah. your hosting, yeah. you've got your tour. Yeah, that's uh, constantly ongoing. How do you balance going, it all with your gaming? The gaming occurs very late at night for very small periods of time, you know, because there is kind of slight lie that I, I claim to be a gamer. I'm a 44-year-old. I don't get to play any of these things. These things take ages to do. I get a chance to dip a toe in them, but most of my gaming now is now doing my little ones even. So it's actually moved on that I'm basically guiding another generation into the world of gaming. I get a little a, a little bit of a, a soak in my head, but I, you know, I, I, I don't finish any of the things. You don't That's get it. to play any games Oh, no, I play them. Oh, no, I play them. But to fit, yeah, no, you do, you bring it around, but it's very, you know, but you, you don't troop into the hotel. You're there for one night and then plug things in and then set the whole Hand apparatus out. up like whatever they've actually had yeah, a lot of mobile but who doesn't at this stage who at this point people always talk about gaming as if it's kind of this niche thing who doesn't on their phone or on their ipad have a load well, of on that, on that niche issue yeah, yeah do you think there is still a little bit of a, a snobbishness from some people who don't quite get gaming that it is just a hobby for for younger people yeah there is a kind of thing i think the average age is in the 30s now for people who actually do this the uh, the gender breakdown has gone more female than male even in the last while because of things like casual gaming look when you've got the prime minister admits to playing fruit ninja this gaming now has means so much stuff that it's actually quietly and they know this it's the largest entertainment industry in the world like it could buy television it could buy film it doesn't need to what it doesn't have obviously it doesn't have the star so it doesn't it won't get the red carpet won't be rammed with people in frocks uh, on something like that but you know they're kind of okay with that now because they know it doesn't matter because they're in everyone's home so it doesn't really matter that they won't get the same kind of glamorous glossy coverage uh -huh. that the BAFTA film would for example Sorry, it's been fantastic talking to you we know you've got to go so break well, a leg prepare a script for this have fun i got to come up with 10 with jokes about games you haven't got long no go actually you've never got to do now <laughs> Coming up in a bit, we'll be checking out the smart bottle that makes water out of air and light. That's along with some of the week's other tech news. But first, here at the BAFTAs, it's been an eventful evening. There were some clear favourites going into the show, but were there any surprises? Here's Chris with a roundup. And the BAFTA for best game goes to Fallout 4. <laughs> Post-apocalyptic survival game Fallout 4 claimed the top prize at this year's BAFTA Games Awards. A big game with a big development budget, it's what's known in the industry as a AAA title. But its creators did have some advice for the independent companies looking to emulate their success. If I look back at the history of our company, Bethesda, then, you know, we started with, uh, you know, we started, we started many, many years ago with kind of small role-playing games and grad gradually built the company, grew the company in a you know, successful sort of way, and now we're, you know, we're a top, top five publisher globally. So I think, I think persistence is the key thing. I think you keep persisting and believe in what you're doing, believe in your dreams, believe in your vision. And indeed, it was a much smaller game that attracted a lot of the attention going into the event. Everybody's Gone to the Rapture, a British game made by indie developer The Chinese Room, was up for 10 awards, including Best Game and Best British Game. In the end, it took home three prizes for audio achievement, performer and music. 
I'm so proud of the team. I run the Chinese room with my husband, Dan. We're a tiny team amongst the giants of the game industry here. It's a low-budget game, so it's brilliant. I think the industry is genuinely ready for something different, actually. It's a good year for British games. It's a really good year for independent games as well. We're telling smaller but different stories. Other nominations for Best British Title included a prison construction and management simulator and an interactive movie-style game that sees you solve a mystery using taped police interviews. But it was an American superhero that would fly the flag for Britain. Batman Arkham Knight, made by London-based Rocksteady Studios, swept up that prize. The BAFTA Games Awards show just how far this industry has come. And the UK is now the sixth largest video games market in the world. But not every developer in this country is having success. Earlier this year, Microsoft cancelled the upcoming fantasy game Fable Legends and closed the Guildford-based studios working on it. While Sony followed suit by shutting down Evolution Studios in Cheshire, which specialised in racing games. And just last week, Activision, the team behind the popular Guitar Hero series, announced a number of UK layoffs. While big companies might be prone to the occasional setback, it's clear that the UK's indie scene remains strong. And with more nominations on the night than anyone else, the team behind Everybody's Gone to the Rapture are proof of that. Chris Cregan, Sky News. Well, as you saw in Chris's piece there, there was a real mix of contenders hoping to walk away with the best game award this year. So we thought it was worth taking a closer look at some of those nominations with our games expert, Lucy James. So The Witcher 3 is a Polish role-playing game where you take on the role of Geralt of Rivia, who is a, essentially a monster hunter for hire. And it was incredibly well received, critically, because it's this huge open world. And usually these kind of games, they're filled with a lot of space. But The Witcher, I mean, you would walk around and you could turn a corner and there'd be something to see, something to do, someone to talk to, and that person would usually be a, a really memorable character. And the combat was a lot of fun because the witchers, they're sort of mutants and they have half magical powers. So it was kind of, in terms of a fantasy RPG, it was the best of both, of all worlds, really. Its character of Geralt sort of was a vessel that people could put themselves into and play as. And it's always just nice to take a big sword out and kill a giant griffin or, you know, make potions. And there's even some ladies in there that you can have relationships with. It was a lot of fun and I'm really glad it's getting recognition of that. The Witcher. Metal Gear Solid 5 is probably one of the best stealth games I've ever played. There was a lot of stuff going on with its development and a lot of key staff members left like right at the end. Very messy and I kind of hope that that hasn't sort of detracted from what is an incredible game. A lot of people will say that the latter third maybe isn't as up to snuff as the rest of it was, but honestly you will find yourself pouring hours into that game determined to get that S rank rating, going around Afghanistan, killing as many evil infiltrating spies as you can. It's an incredible game and it's sort of testament to Kojima Productions because it, 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 like, it had a very long development period and it came out and it was great. And Metal Gear fans loved it. And you had a dog on your team and a horse and a silent sniper. It was honestly a lot of fun. If you'd have told me last year that one of my favorite games would be a car game mixed with football. I don't know what I would have told you, but that was certainly the case with Rocket League because it is so much fun. So you basically play a game of football, usually four a side, but instead of having players, you have cars. And the ball has kind of like augmented gravity. It, like if it goes up into the air, it hovers a little bit too long. It's nice to sort of get to grips with, but soon you'll find yourself going on YouTube, trying to find out hints and tricks because there's a thing you can do where you can, you know, like, boost forward and then jump at a certain time and do a flip and it is one of the fun most fun multiplayer games i've ever played it's incredible and i mean it was free for a long time on uh, playstation plus it was free for a month and just it gathered such an incredible momentum such an incredible community came out of it and honestly psionics did such a brilliant job with rocket league now time for a quick roundup of some of this week's other tech news Take a look at the bottle that creates water out of thin air. Fontas works by capturing moisture, then condensing it into safe drinking water. It uses solar energy. The makers say you can clip it to your backpack and have it fill up with water while you're hiking. The project's crowdfunding on Indiegogo. 
For those days when there might be a bit too much moisture in the air, here's a way to make sure you never forget your brolly. Umbrella connects to your phone and sends you alerts when rain is on the way, reminding you to take it out with you. The makers who launched the project on Kickstarter this week boast its ability to stay strong in windy weather too. And here's another crowdfunding project making the most of the weather. Watley is a solar-powered water purification machine and power station. The campaign on Indiegogo is raising money to take one to Ghana, Nigeria or Sudan to give communities sustainable water, electricity and connectivity. And a new app's launched that lets you send money in the same way you'd send a text message. Your friends and family don't even need to be registered users to receive it. Circle has no cash limit and doesn't charge fees to move money instantly between the US and UK. Well, that's it for this week. Take a look at Sky News on mobile, iPad, Catch Up and Sky Q for all the latest tech news throughout the week. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.